Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, Jim Hodson here at the Fort Worth Aviation Museum with Kevin Renshaw. And uh, we're here for another episode of uh, YF-16 Update. And we're calling this one Winging It because Kevin's got information about the wings he wants to talk about today. Go ahead, Kev. Okay. So I guess last time we talked to everybody was before Christmas. Uh, we're going through our process here. What are we going to do to put the wings on this airplane, including how do we get the whole airplane painted? And you can tell we've been scraping a lot of paint off the airplane. You see a lot of the white showing through. But we've been working on getting back to the original paint jobs. Uh, this airplane has had so many paint jobs on it. When it first came out of the factory, it was in that light blue and white. You can see some of the light blue peeking through. Oh, yeah, places. that cream and white. That yeah. cream and white, experimental, air superiority blue. And that only lasted a month or two. They decided it wasn't a very good paint job. Then it had a gray paint job for doing tactical testing during the YF program. Then it had the red, white, and blue air show paint job with a couple variations in there as a repaired thing. And then it, up at the labs, they put this silver gray uh, metallic paint on it as a, a base coat for their, all their antenna testing. So as we've been going through this, what we've determined is we can, we can scrape all day. We're finally going to end up having the airplane bead blasted. Right. So coming up next month, we're getting ready for that. And as part of that, we're trying to figure out, well, how do we do both sides of the wing? Bead blasting upside down is really not a lot of fun. Plus, we need to turn the wings several times to repaint them. The plan right now is to take the whole airplane back down to bare metal, okay, build up with epoxy primer, and then white epoxy or polyurethane gloss white. And that's one of the reasons we're going to take it to bare metal. With all these layers of paint, if we just started trying to sand here and there, and you'd end up seeing all the, the, the steps and drop-offs where the old paint was still right, on it. Right, right. So the only cure for that is to take it back to bare metal and start from scratch. So one of the things we had to do was go through and find all the markings from the YF days, from the red, white, and blue paint job, and make sure we know how to put those back on it. And yeah, we got the stars and bars up there pretty visible. Yeah, uh, and one of the things we've been doing is going through and measuring where are those on the aircraft, uh, you can see that one's got a fuselage station marked in the middle of it, and it says 20-inch star on it. Turns out there's a spec for how you do the stars and bars on aircraft, and it's all based on the diameter of the star. If you draw a circle around the five points, so the wings have 30-inch stars, and the fuselage has 20-inch stars. You should probably show them this one a little easier. Yeah, and then everything else, the, the blue border, the red, white, and red stripes in the, uh, the sides of the stars and bars are all ratioed off that circle. Okay. So it always stays in proportion. Okay. So by identifying the measures, so we know this is a 30-inch star, and we took some other dimensions on how far it is from the trailing edge here, how far it is outboard on the wing, so we can put it back in exactly the same place when we repaint the airplane. Kind of doing the location marking. Exactly. Yeah. We're, cool. we're getting coordinates to put things back together like it's supposed to be. Terrific. The other stuff you see on the side of the fuselage right after that dark green panel, and watch your feet there, Jim. Yep. Um, there were markings in the prototype days that told you there were three batteries in the aircraft and where to find them. Okay. And actually, the way I found the full text of this was off a model airplane decal sheet. Is that right? Okay. Because the model airplane guys in the world have detailed the hell out of all these things. Yeah. So They've got it all down. So this says battery locations behind external panel equipment bay, uh, 1101, uh, 1404, and 23 or 1301. It tells you where to find those. And we know how big they are. They're in one inch stencil. And we've got a stencil cutting machine. And we'll so we're going to go to that level of detail with the markings. We're going to make it look right like it did back Perfect. in the day. Perfect. The red stripe is interesting. You don't see those on modern airplanes. In the 50s and 60s, jet engines would occasionally spit turbine blades. Right. And that's the marker for the first stage of the turbine of an F-100 as installed in an F-16. It's that far back. Yeah. Remember, the tailpipe sticks out. The, we're that's missing right, it the, does. It's the last part of the tailpipe. Away. This is actually where the, uh, the, about the engine mounts and the first turbine stage on the engine. So if any, anything was going to fail, that's where it would have happened. So the answer was don't stand in line with the yeah. red stripe. Deborah Johnson says it will be a patriotic beauty. It will at that. Yes. It will at that. Well, it will. So what we're doing to get ready with the wings, this woodwork you see behind us and the pile of lumber over there. Let me turn around so we can show them the rotisserie yeah. here, as we're calling it. So this is based on something they actually use in the factory when they were building F-16 wings. They had 
nice welded metal stands that picked up the wing by the root fittings and by the tip and let you rotate it back and forth because they needed to rotate it in the factory to install all the fuel plumbing and wiring and fuel sealing before they put the top skin on. And they could tilt it straight up or tilt it over on its side. We're doing the same kind of thing here and we call it a rotisserie because when we bead blast the airplane it'll be easiest to have it standing up so the guy can come on both sides and knock the, right. all the old paint off. And then when we want to paint it, it's easier to paint it level because paint likes to flow out nice right. and flat. We can have it either way. So we're going to be building two of these stands and it's kind of brute force, two by tens and two by fours. Um, but you were showing us a draw, showed me a drawing last week yeah. where you had to figure out where the center of gravity on the wing was so that the wing will easily right. rotate and stay in whatever position. And we you don't need want to have we it. don't want the wing just flopping over back and forth. Right. So we're, put, we're putting these pivots through here. And that's two and a half inch steel pipe. Okay. I think that should be stout enough. This wing, as you see it right here, each wing weighs about 600 pounds. Oh, really? Okay. The wing box and the trailing edge flap. We're going to take the leading edge off because we're still working on those parts on the ground. Okay. I think the last time we looked at this, it did not have the leading edge on it. It was no, there, no, but it wasn't. It let's had step around the front here, and I'll show you what we've sure. been doing on the leading edge. A uh, couple things happened since we last talked. The leading edge was manufactured in one piece. When we got it back from the labs, each side was in three pieces. Oh no. And what they had done is they had cut a section out in the middle here, and late model F-16s have a EW antenna mounted in that leading edge. Okay. And they had put a different section in there with those EW antennas. All right. So we had the original part, we put it back in. You can see these splice plates here. We're gonna have a little bump on the leading edge that wasn't there originally but there's not a good way to do that didn't want to just go right in that and we needed the structure to be tied together so all all three of these are splice plates those we did okay, um, we're back the other thing we're doing is fixing up the uh, the leading edge flap seals okay now we're, we're cheating on these a little bit because the production ones or even the yf ones were two pieces that interlocked okay since we don't have leading edge flap drives in here we put these nice quarter inch metal plates that bridge the gap in there. Oh, okay. That to hold the leading edge flap in place because we don't have the drive mechanism anymore. That's right. another thing okay. the lab got rid of. And they were using these big blocks of aluminum to hold everything together. Okay. Um, so we're gonna go with simple one piece seal since the flap never has to move on display. Right. We're putting right. it at the neutral parked on the ground position for the flaps. Okay. Um, It'll also keep bugs and dirt and bird's nests out of that nice hollow cove and leading edge. Another good thing. <laughs> Another good thing, cut, trying to cut down on possible corrosion paths. So we've been cutting down these leading edge flap seals, uh, just working all that together. We're gonna take these off because we don't need that much weight up in the air and it's easier to work on leading edge flaps off. Yeah. They're just on here right now because uh, Don Crowley's been fitting up the leading edge oh, seals. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, that's, that was today's work, in fact, for him. Okay. So we'll get the, this ready to go into the fixture in the next week or two here. It's probably going to be mid-February, weather permitting, when okay. we start the bead blasting. Yeah, I think um, we're scheduled to do that on the 16th right now. Uh, I think that's the date, yes. Yeah, and if we can, we're going to do a, uh, we're going to do a live presentation of either that or bead blasting the F4. I think okay. people the, the like The F4 is that. a week before that. Right. So right. you can see, in fact, we've done a little test shot here yeah, let's on the side me. of the inlet. We, we did a couple of these areas and the part in there, the, the green is a green epoxy primer. Okay. Instead of zinc chromate and all the EPA things that go with that, we're using an epoxy primer. Let's go ahead and let everybody under, uh, know what a bead, what bead blasting is. Okay, so bead blasting, uh, it's like sand blasting, but instead of using sand, it's little glass particles. Because glass is harder than the paint, but it's not necessarily harder than the metal. So we'll get everything back down to bare shiny metal and we can go look at the F4 maybe later. Uh, we just brushed a couple of coats of, of primer on here to see how it takes. The good news you is... Can, it, you can really see the line though between the yes, old paint you can see, that's and why the metal. we have to get everything off. This is yeah. the old paint and there'd be steps like that all over and when you paint something gloss white, That'll that would show really that. show yeah. up. All kinds of shadowing and everything. Yeah. So. so we're going to get that done. Uh, we've got the guy working on the nose cone. Uh, Butch Sickles has the uh, the mold at his shop, and he's going to be working on that for us. We're getting making progress. The other thing we're having to work on repairing is right here on the leading edge strake. Okay. Uh, 
there's a thing about moving things on large flatbed trucks. The widest thing you can put on a flatbed truck without a wide load permit is 108 inches. This airplane was 120 inches wide. The crew that went and fetched it for us decided the answer to that was to saw off six inches on either side of the jet. Okay. Um, so we're in the process of putting that back together. We got all the pieces, and you can see we're putting the splice plates in here. Right. We'll get that all hooked back together. These are just locating parts. Um, they basically took a sawzall and took off the wing. Wish they hadn't done that, but it's history, and so we're going to fix it. Yep. Uh, right. and that's another just another repair job in my our list of things to do. I was say compared to other things that you've done here with this airplane already. Yeah, uh, that's really not <laughs> load bearing is the good part of that. Yeah, we just got to make it look right. See all the, the gaps up here. Here's the actual edge of the leading edge strake that'll go back on here. Once again, we got to put some splice plates in there. What we're trying to do is get the contour right, which is pretty yeah. easy. It, it's it goes together well. You can actually see some of the red air show paint showing through. Oh, yeah. Because the whole edge of this strake was red. Oh, that's right. Yes. All the way up yes. to the, 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 there was kind of a <coughs> cheat line all the way to the front here of the airplane. See, we've got uh, Doc Giles says he built them for years out at the Fort Worth plant. Um, very glad to see you guys restoring it. Yep. Yep. We are, too. We are, too. This is our pride and joy. This is the airplane that made a lot of people's families uh, be able to feed their families and send their kids to college. Uh, this was the, the number two airplane in the series of 4,600 that have been built now. So, well, it's an it's an icon not only for this era, but it's going to be the icon of this museum for years to come. Yes, so. and we're happy to put in the time working on it. You know, my wife refers to it as my mistress. You know, it's <laughs> yep, yep. A lot so. of people out here. Yep. So. But it's a, it's all worthwhile. So, anything else that you want to uh, talk to him about today? Uh, no, we just kind of said we're getting ready to, to knock it down, get the paint off of it, and okay. that'll be a big progress. We discovered that trying to scrape it by hand and hit it with hand sanders, we, we'd be working on this for another two years before right. we got it painted. Well, you guys have made remarkable uh, progress. You've been working on it now for just two years. Yep. Uh, and actually didn't just really two days a week. Work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, the, and COVID slowed it down a little bit, but yep. you guys were still out here most days working on it. Yeah. So uh, we have a, a small group that everybody knows each other. Yeah. Everybody's been healthy. You know, nobody's had any problems like that. So it's, it's worked well for us. So the day we bead blast it, the 16th yeah. or whatever day that happens, what's going to happen to the airplane after it's been stripped naked, essentially? Okay, they, they've got a preservative chemical they're going to spray on it to make sure nothing rusts. Okay. And then when we get ready to paint it, we'll go over it again with the power washer. Okay. And that, that's a water-soluble thing to, to get everything off right. the airplane so the paint sticks well. Uh, so how soon after the blasting are you anticipating you're going to be putting the base coat on? It's going to be weather-dependent. Okay. Ideally, you'd like to do it within a few weeks, although we've had the, the F4 has a big spot that's been cleaned, and that's been two or three weeks already, and it doesn't show any sign of, of any okay. problems right now. Got a message here from David Cohen. He says, the attention to all of the details going into the restoration is amazing. I love going behind the scenes. And we're glad to have you with us too, yeah, David. Thank you. We're, we're trying to do it right. Um, I said, I learned my trade as an engineer over at General Dynamics sitting next to the guys that designed this airplane. Yeah. I, I kind of owe it to them. They, they did a good job of putting this together and teaching me my trade I want to take care of this airplane kind of in, in honor of all the work they did. That's good. So this airplane is going to be all white before too long. It's going to essentially be a white tail before too yeah. long, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to start with even the areas that get painted red. The, the best way to make a bright red paint show up on a car or anything else is throw a layer of white underneath yeah. it. And then that's what we're going to do is the whole airplane will be one color white and then we'll start putting the markings and everything on from well, there. Well, it's going to be amazing. And so. The, the wings will be painted separately than the body. Yes. And then when will the wings go on the airplane? Uh, whenever we get all the paint and the markings on. It's, okay. It's also easier taping off stars and bars upside down. Okay. Is awkward on a good day. So we want to, that's the other point of, of having the rotisseries is we can blast it on the rotisserie, do paint the top side primer, paint the bottom side primer, flip it over, paint the top side white, paint the bottom side white, Red, red markings. Okay. That's why we wanted to get this all done before we put the wings on the airplane. And so essentially, the wings are going to be finished before the fuselage is. They'll go the on. The wings will be white. 
it won't have its blue backbone right, or right but you'll have but the wings will be finished yes. before the fuselage portion of it is yes because you'll paint those off and then put them on the airplane and they'll be finished when they go on the air that, that's the idea pretty cool since we need to flip them about eight times that's yeah. why we're building the rotisserie yeah it's all good yep it's all good so uh we've got other projects out here the ta4 that you see behind kevin is ready for paint that's going to be one of our highlight airplanes at Hops and Props, which is April 30th this year. And then I'm going to spin you around here so that you can see. We got the rotor on the Sea Cobra. So oh yeah, that's we awesome. sure do. Well, let me, you'll see that as I pan across here. There's the Sea Cobra out there with the rotor on. So that one is uh, that one is complete. But then we've got the F4. That's going to get bead blasted the week before the F16. And then it will be painted also. That's going to be one of our other highlight airplanes for. Uh, uh, for hops and props this year. It's going into a Vietnam era Yes, camo. it is. It's going to go into, I think it's uh, the 433rd Tactical Fighter Squadron colors uh, on that one. So uh, so we're going to be busy out here in the next couple of months getting ready for hops and props and having these things uh, for people to look at. Uh, David OZ said, uh, the right team for this job. She's coming along nicely. Thank you, David. Appreciate Thank you. the kind Appreciate words. It. So unless you've got anything else, we're going to call it a day out here for today. We've got a nice day. Yeah, finally. It yeah. started off at 28 <laughs> degrees when we came out this morning. Yeah, all right. And I will mention that uh, uh, I was out and, uh, and did a recon of the uh, F-100F that we're going to be getting out at Mojave. You'll be hearing more about that as we move forward with that. And uh, so for now, from, uh, from Kevin and myself here at uh, Fort Worth Aviation Museum, home to the most touchable warbirds in Texas, Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.